Hello everyone, today we will discuss about motor functions of stomach. Starting with physiological activities in the stomach. Stomach has following important functions. Food is stored in the stomach and it is mixed with acid, mucus and pepsin. Food is released at a controlled steady rate into the duodenum. Now, functional anatomy of stomach. General features. Stomach is J-shaped hollow muscular bag and it is connected to the esophagus at its upper end and to the duodenum at its lower end. Gastric contains. They are isolated from the rest of digestive tract. Proximally by, you can see here, lower esophageal sphincter. You can see here, this one. And distally by pyloric sphincter, this one. Now, musculature of stomach. Characteristic features of gastric musculature. Muscle coat of stomach has three layers. They are outer longitudinal, middle circular and inner oblique layer. Inner oblique layer is important for churning action. You can see here in the diagram. This is outer longitudinal layer. This is middle circular layer and this is inner oblique layer. Now, this muscle layers, they act as functional syncytium. In the fundus of stomach, the layers are thin and strength of contraction is weak. Here, fundus part. And in the antrum, muscle layers, they are thick and strength of contraction, they become stronger. Now, innervation of stomach, like elsewhere in the gut, muscle layer in the stomach includes an extrinsic and intrinsic innervation, starting with intrinsic innervation. There are two interconnected plexuses, one that is myentric plexus which is located between the layer of circular and longitudinal muscles of the stomach, you can see here. This is myentric plexus between longitudinal and circular muscle layer and second one that is mesner's plexus which is located in the submucosal layer you can see here the intrinsic innovation is directly responsible for peristaltic activity as well as other contractions this intrinsic system is continuous between the stomach and the duodenum peristalsis in the antrum influences the duodenal bulb Extrinsic innovation. It modifies the coordinated motor activities that arise independently in the intrinsic nervous system. That is the function of extrinsic innovation. Extrinsic innovation that is by sympathetic and parasympathetic innovation. You can see here. These are sympathetic and parasympathetic fibers. Sympathetic innovation comes via celiac plexus and it inhibits motility and it causes vasoconstriction of blood vessels and it causes relaxation of gastric smooth muscles. Parasympathetic innervation comes via vagus nerve and this vagal fibers they stimulate motility as well as secretions. Vagal fibers terminate on the antric nervous system and they form the antric nervous system ganglia fibers and they go to various structures like exocrine gland so they affect glandular secretion muscles of the stomach so they affect the muscle contraction and various cells now initiation of gastric motility for that gastric slow waves or basal electrical rhythm is responsible now what is this basal electrical rhythm that is rhythmic contractile myogenic tone this basal electrical rhythm that is a wave of depolarization of smooth muscles proceeding from the circular muscles of the fundus of the stomach to the pyloric sphincter. You can see here, these waves, they originate by the pacemaker cells which are present near the fundus, present on the, you can see here, present on the greater curvature. These are pacemaker cells. They are responsible for initiation of this basal electrical rhythm. And this wave of depolarization of smooth muscle cell proceeding from the circular muscles of the fundus of the stomach to the pyloric sphincter as we have discussed. Now, gastric slow waves, 
they are in the form of upstroke and plateau you can see here in the diagram these are slow waves that is upstroke and slight plateau is there the frequency is 3 to 4 per minute and velocity of this waves that is 1 cm per second and maximum that is 3 to 4 cm per second this upstroke of this slow wave that is due to sodium and calcium ions into the cell and the plateau that is because of flow of calcium ion into the cell now acetylcholine that affects the gastric motility by increasing contractile activity it is by increasing amplitude you can see here this is the amplitude as well as duration of the plateau phase of slow gastric waves certain agents they initiate contraction of smooth muscles and they are gastrin histamine nicotine barium and potassium whereas certain agents they inhibit the activity and they are antrogastrone epinephrine norepinephrine atropine and calcium ions now we discuss about types of gastric motility that is divided mainly in two types one that is motility of empty stomach and second that is gastric motility related to meal motility of empty stomach is also of two types one that is migrating motor complex and second that is hunger contractions and gastric motility related to meal is again of three types number one that is receptive relaxation second that is mixing peristaltic waves and third that is gastric empty starting with first that is motility of empty stomach that is migrating motor complex this migrating motor complex it begins in the esophagus and it travels through entire gastrointestinal tract and this is present important thing that is present during interdigestive period only what is the function of this migrating motor complex it is to remove the food remaining in the stomach during interdigestive period rate of migration that is 5 cm per minute and it occurs at a rate of 60 to 90 minutes during interdigestive period this migrating motor complex it has three phases you can see here three phases are shown here phase one there is no electrical activity as well as mechanical activity phase two irregular electrical activity as well as mechanical activity and phase three that is regular electrical as well as mechanical activity now effect of various factors motilin you can see here this is see motilin that increases strength of migrating motor complex migrating motor complex is abolished immediately after the entry of food as we have discussed it is present in the interdigestive period and migrating motor complex is associated with increased secretion of bile from liver gastric juice as well as pancreatic juice so this is first movement during interdigestive period or motility of empty stomach second motility of empty stomach that is hunger contraction this hunger contractions are peristaltic waves but these are present in empty stomach intensity of hunger contraction increases over a period of time if the person has not taken food these are tetanic contractions and they last for about two to three minutes and they become painful and they are associated with hunger now we discuss about gastric motility related to meals first is receptive relaxation and accommodation this is important for storage function here when food enters in the stomach this migrating motor complex as we have discussed is abolished and there is relaxation of you can see oral region of the stomach you can see in the diagram and that is to accommodate ingested food without any increase in the intramural pressure and this is known as receptive relaxation now this receptive relaxation what is its significance it prevents much increase in the pressure inside the stomach and it mixes the food as well as it is important for controlled delivery of food to the duodenum now mechanism of receptive relaxation passage of each bolus of food it stimulates stretch receptors these stretch receptors are stimulated in the oral region you can see here and because of distension and stimulation of stretch receptor there is further relaxation and by the end of meal smooth muscles of the oral region of stomach they relax to such an extent that one can accommodate about one to two liters of food and this receptive relaxation is vasovagal reflex means vagotomy abolishes receptive relaxation 
and this is initiated by distension of stomach and it is synchronized with primary peristaltic waves present in the esophagus. Now, what is the role of various hormones? Cholecystokinin participate in the receptive relaxation. It is by increasing distensibility of oral part of the stomach. You can see in the diagram role of cholecystokinin as well as certain inhibitory neurotransmitters like vasoactive intestinal peptide and nitric oxide. They are responsible for receptive relaxation and accommodation. Second movement that is mixing peristalsis. Because of presence of food in the caudal region, there is increase in the contractile activity of this caudal part and increases contractile activity that is combination of peristaltic waves and retropulsion that is known as mixing waves. What is its significance? It mixes the food with the stomach acid and enzymes and also it breaks the food into smaller and smaller pieces and this is known as chyme. This peristaltic waves, they are wave of contraction and relaxation. Here you can see these are peristaltic waves for which you can see this is oral and this is caudal region, wave of contraction followed by wave of relaxation. Contraction is because of some neurotransmitter like acetylcholine here and relaxation is because of inhibitory neurotransmitters. Now, initiation and production of peristalsis. Peristalsis are produced by periodic change in the membrane potential that is basal electrical rhythm. This rhythmicity it is determined by basal electrical rhythm and the frequency of which is 3 to 4 per minute. Certain neurotransmitters like acetylcholine and certain hormones like gastrin, they cause generation of depolarizing spike at the peak of basal electrical rhythm cycle. And that results in mechanical contraction that is peristaltic waves. Now, force of peristaltic waves that is regulated by various neuronal and hormonal factors. First, there is distension of stomach or increased gastric secretion increases peristaltic waves. Second, gastric contraction, they are increased by vagus stimulation and decreased by sympathetic stimulation. Acetylcholine and gastrin increase the size of slow wave plateau potential and increase the amount of calcium entering in the cell from the extracellular fluid and it activates second messengers that releases calcium ions from sarcoplasmic reticulum. And because of increase in the amount of calcium and the smooth muscle, force of contraction increases. Next is mixing mechanism of peristalsis and retropulsion. Peristaltic waves, they originate in the mid-stomach and proceed caudally. Most marked peristalsis, they are present in the distal half of the stomach. Food particles, they move towards pylorus along with the deep wave of contraction. When the wave of contraction reaches pyloric sphincter and causes its contraction before food reaches there. Then what is retropulsion? When food reaches to the pylorus, it strikes the pylorus, you can see here. And when the pylorus is closed, it strikes against the closed pyloric sphincter with a force. And most of the antral content, they are forced back into the stomach, mainly into the body of stomach and only small amount of the chyme passes to the duodenum and so this movement is known as retropulsion and because of this forward and backward movement gastric contains they are broken down into the food particles small food particles and it is mixed with the gastric secretion and it forms semi liquid paste which is known as chyme now Gastric emptying, it takes place only after the chyme is decomposed into small pieces that is less than 1 mm cube. Here, progressive wave of forceful contraction involves antrum, pylorus and proximal duodenum. Now, forceful gastric emptying wave is spread over the antrum a strong peristaltic ring like contraction and the pressure created by this gastric ring that is 50 to 70 centimeter of water and because of this chyme is pushed against pyloric sphincter 
and every time only 2 to 7 ml of chyme is pumped into the small intestine. Now, mechanism of gastric emptying. During gastric emptying, you can see there is a progressive wave of contraction that involves, you can see, antrum, pylorus and proximal duodenum. Because of contraction of antrum and which is followed by contraction of pyloric region and duodenum, this three part, all these three parts, they act as a unit and that results in controlled emptying of the gastric content. Now, regurgitation from the duodenum that is prevented. Any content from the duodenum, they do not regurgitate to the stomach because of contraction of pyloric segment that is slightly longer than the contraction of duodenum. Pyloric sphincter contraction they are longer than the contraction of duodenum so there is no regurgitation and along with that there is stimulating action of cholecystokinin and secretin on the pyloric sphincter. Now factors affecting gastric emptying first that is fluidity of chyme emptying of the liquid that is faster than the solid food Rate of gastric emptying is fasted when gastric contains they are isotonic and it is slowest when the gastric contains they are hypertonic. Now, second that is gastric factors. Volume of food. When the food volume increases, that is stretching, stretching of the gastric wall. And distension of the stomach stimulates vagal mediated reflex and intrinsic neural plexus mediated reflexes, which increases the rate of gastric emptying. According to Laplace's law, tension applied on the wall of any organ that is the function of its radius and therefore when radius increases, increase in the tension and it acts as adequate stimulus for generating peristaltic waves that is mediated by vagus. Next factor is gastric hormones. One is gastrin. It increases the activity of pyloric pump and it promotes gastric emptying. Another factor that is type of food ingested. When the food is carbohydrate rich, gastric emptying is rapid. When the food is protein rich, emptying is slow. And fat rich food, the emptying is slowest. Now, there is clinical significance. Alcohol intoxication that is prevented by giving fatty food because alcohol can easily be absorbed. So if we give fatty food along with alcohol, its absorption and intoxication is reduced. Now. Other factors are duodenal factors. One is anterogastric reflex. Here, when the receptors present in the duodenal mucosa, they are stimulated by distension or acidity of the content or osmolarity or presence of fat and protein. From the duodenum, impulses they pass to the stomach. That is through myentric plexus and it inhibits gastric emptying. Second factor that is anterogastric hormones. They are cholecystokinin. It acts by blocking excitatory effects of gastrin on the gastric smooth muscles. Another is secretin. Secretin has direct inhibitory effect on the smooth muscles and gastric inhibitory peptide also reduces gastric motility. Another factor is duodenal osmoreceptors. Size of duodenal osmoreceptor that also affect the gastric emptying. Hypoosmolar chyme. In the duodenum, it causes distension of the osmoreceptors and inhibits the rate of gastric emptying. Osmolar chyme causes shrinkage of the osmoreceptor and stimulate rate of gastric emptying. Enterogastric hormones, they inhibit gastric contraction. They are cholecystokinin. They are released in response to presence of digestive products of fat and protein. And they block excitatory effects of gastrin on the gastric smooth muscles. Second is secretin. Secretin is released in response to presence of acid in the duodenum and it also has direct inhibitory effect on the smooth muscles. GIP, gastric inhibitory peptide that is released in response to presence of fat in the chyme and it also reduces gastric motility. Other factors which include emotions, they have strong effect on gastric motility. Anger and aggression increases gastric motility whereas fear decreases gastric motility. Vagotomy decreases gastric empty. This is all about motor functions of stomach. Thank you.